I'm recording it. Yep, I am. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Change it. <laughs> Feel the thrill of the chase. Discover new and powerful weapons. And control the destinies of America's leading morons. Whoa. Two morons, three different games. The Beavis and Butthead video game for Genesis, Game Gear, and Super NES. Yeah. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Hey, all. What are you doing? Welcome to Play Retro. That's right. I'm uh, Scott Johnson, your host, and I need TP for my bunghole and my Genesis. I want your Genesis. Gross. And I'm your other host, Brian Dunaway, and I just played eight hours of Frog Baseball. Frog Baseball! And Mm. I still don't have Guar tickets. I'll set the building on fire. 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 Fire! 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 Mm. Fryer! Fryer! You guys uh, guys at home, people at home are going, whoa, they're doing... They're doing Beavis and Butthead. What the hell happened to my retro show? Yeah, well, this time we're, we're turning the tables. Instead of Beavis and Butthead, do something. It's going to be Scott and Brian do Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then it does the rest of you at the same time or something. Uh, as you all know, they just had a hit movie come to uh, Paramount+. Plus. It did real well, and uh, I saw it and really enjoyed it. They're going to be a, a well. decent size of our audience that have no love for the old Beavis and Butthead stuff. Uh, or Mike Judge's early work, I don't know. But uh, I guess we'll find out when we get emails next week. But we thought, since there's also a new series debuting, which is already out and up to three episodes, I think. Um, uh, there's two episodes. Two. Randy told me there was a third. He's a liar. I thought there was a third as well, so I must also be a liar. <laughs> I don't know. Is it today? Today at uh, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 to 9, 2022. There's only two episodes for me on the gotcha. Paramount Plus uh, service, but uh, I don't know. Whatever you must Whatever. be right. I'm behind uh, behind one then, not two, because I've only seen the first one, which is the escape room episode, and it's oh, it's great. The by the way, one is so it's really funny freaking good. It's really good. It, they, they haven't skipped really a beat. Is. These guys, they haven't skipped a beat. They they walked right into 2022 and are still funny. If you like it, Brian and I were having yeah, this whole like conversation it. before the show about you either like it or you don't. Uh, it's yeah. like root beer was, was his point. You either like root beer or you don't. <laughs> you know, there's not a lot of middle ground on things like Beavis and Butthead, but they did have an impact on you know Genesis, Super NES, PC, kind of the that era. 90s. Yeah, the 90s yeah. were a big deal, and they had a bunch of video games. So we're going to talk about those, but also kind of in ancillary ways, uh, other tie-ins like them. Uh, what succeeded, what didn't, you know, just kind of look at the landscape yeah. of that time a little bit. Yeah, Viacom was doing some things. You may you may know those guys, Paramount Plus. Uh, yeah, they were doing some video games. Some were okay. Some were not so okay. Yeah, some mm-hmm. were bad. A couple of them were pretty good, though. Uh, one in particular. Yeah, don't worry. We did our last Beavis and Butthead impressions at the top of the show. Everything else is going to be Mike Judge. Oh, yeah, approved. you're not going to hear us. Either the, Yeah, some of it's Mike Judge. Some of it might be stand-ins because I did some recording. And, who boy, some of these. Yeah, some of it was Mike Judge. I was kind of shocked. Wait till you hear the Game Gear voice uh, samples. Oh my lord! Oh, I did. I did hear the Game Gear. I played a. I actually played a good bit of that one. I did too. Mm -hmm. It's actually not bad. Uh, It's dumb that it's fun. It's actually it's dumb, but it plays tight. It's nice and tight. Yeah, Yeah. we'll get to all that coming up. Before that, a couple of quick things. Both Brian and I got our little tiny Dilberts, not Dilberts, (laughs) Cuberts. <laughs> I'm touching my Dilbert right now in honor of uh, Beavis and Butthead. Where is mine? Oh, I left it upstairs. Boom! There Mine's right there on the screen, baby. Just like that, Miss oh. Batman you showed us last week. This yeah. is uh, the micro Batman. arcade Cubert. These people don't give us any money. We just saw it on uh, on the Amazon. I think this was like twelve ninety nine, and I like it and appreciate it. Like Scott said last week about credit card size, but thicker than that. Uh, and just, you know, it's, it's like three Kubert. credit cards it's, stacked. If you had to, yeah, play. I mean, Kubert just, he just had move buttons. He didn't, you know, so you got your, your tokens and your start button mm-hmm. over here. And then you just got, you just got your movement, right? That's mm-hmm. all you need. The little D pad. Like you said, uh, watch face about the same size is my, my Apple watch. Mm-hmm. Was it like a seven or something to have on? So the screen size is about that size. Yeah. Not nearly as clear, but you know, hey, why not? It's a uh, Cubert and it's purple. It looks that back of it just looks sexy right there. Just having that alone. Yeah. I want to get my phone like uh, tattooed with that. Or something. <coughs> yeah, having a, a cool purple back like that, like the matte finish, yeah. that would be cool. Yeah, that looks um, good. But anyway, the yeah, mine got in as well. I just left it upstairs, but I've already taken mine out of the packages, charged them and played them both. Brian's Mr. Mint in Box over there. Yeah, I, 
I I didn't see any reason because you could fully access all the buttons. It was already fully charged. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah, play it through here. And I mm. played it exactly as much as I thought I would play a Qbert disc, the credit card size. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I needed. I won't lie. I needed readers for uh, both of these. They're pretty tiny, yeah. little tiny sprites. Kind of hard to see mm -hmm. what's going on, but I love them yeah. for what they are. So I that. think it's Cubert. It's definitely Cubert. <laughs> In fact, I think it's a more. Um, I think it's a more representative Cubert than this is of Pac Man. This is fine, but it's a little on the choppy side. It feels a little game yeah. and watch in terms of graphics and stuff. Whereas the the Cubert actually moves and feels like Cubert. So yeah, the uh, the the character size on Miss Pac Man is is much smaller, and those dots are much yeah. smaller than Cubert. Cubert's actually he takes up a little bit more room of the screen. Yeah. And, you know, it's got that pyramid you jump around on. We got to get a Cubert episode going on one day. I want to know what they were thinking with that little foul mouth, uh, Gonzo, Gonzo looking short ball penis face thing. Thing, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like a Muppet ball with a with a with a trunk. Yeah, it looks and a little like, bit. I guess he's an alien because he jumps and then he says bad words when uh, when the the coiled snakes hit him and stuff. It's, yeah, he goes. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Yeah, rawr, rawr. and he looks like Birdo uh, from Super Mario Brothers too. Yeah, like that Birdo egg egg chucking Birdo. Yeah, yeah, Birdo, not Berto. No, Birdo. By the way, not, worst character in the history Berto. of Mario. Can't stand Birdo. <laughs> worst. So he's your uh, he's your. Uh, 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 what is that stupid thing we played the other week that was uh, the Mega Man <laughs> with the stupid oh the stupid fart knocker? Yeah. He's uh, yeah he's the, he's a blob. He's cross eyed and he's yeah. from the void. And I he's forgot a, the name. Oh, it's some Grease name. Spot. Grease Spot was that it? No, is. it's something else. But yeah, it was bad. You're like not that. wrong. Uh, yeah, Cubert. I have fond feelings for Cubert. We will probably need to talk about Cubert at length at some point. We that little in that little rainbow disc you wrote on, oh, yeah. was back up to the top so you could say, "Suck it, you yeah. stupid snakes!" Yeah, I still find that gameplay super addictive. Something yeah, about it, good. and it's yeah. and it's kind of just pseudo three D Pac Man in that you're not eating things, but you have to turn all these these platforms to colors and you avoid creatures yeah. while you do it, and. Something Later about levels, it. you can you have to you have to turn them multiple times. Yeah. It, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good game loop, Cuber. Yeah, something about it I really like. So we'll we'll yeah. do Cuber one day. You guys, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, we it. Um, also, a couple quick things. Um, if you're a fan of the Outrun Sega Outrun games, which uh, we I talked am. about in passing, but never a full show on yet. Anyway, or did we? Did we do Outrun? No. We have not done Outrun. <laughs> I have. I have. Uh, I think I suggested one week, but we had some some other hot thing that came up, and we. We're going to have to head back to it. But yeah, we will Outrun get back to get Outrun. To Outrun's awesome. Yeah. So Outrun in both arcade and home forms, and especially the PSP game called Outrun 20 or 2003, mm -hmm. um, amazing games. Well, I'm always on the hunt for something that makes me feel like those games did. Right. And there's a game that's been out for a year or two now, but is just now kind of, I don't know, getting attention. Um, and it's a game that was built to be like those or to feel like those but also look nice on new and modern systems right um, a lot of neon and but like yes. just looks but not all sexy. pixely and whatever you know they, they yeah. wanted to go for something that seems sort of new but it plays like those old games which is really what i was looking yeah. for is that kind of feeling of, the, of those games and the game is called and some of you may have heard of it it's called horizon chase yes. and uh i'm gonna put it i'll do a quick video i here. love this game I am so glad you brought it up. I love the fact that it's on sale on Steam, you said, I think. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's on sale on Steam for five bucks. It's five available bucks. on the Switch. It's on Xbox, PlayStation. Everybody's got it. Started out on iOS, funny enough, or on mobile. Oh, I didn't um, know that. As a thing, yep. And uh, did pretty well there. Uh, and moved out to these other consoles, which I think is where they're going to shine the most because, you know, controllers and right. stuff. Anyway, um, I've been holding off on buying it for my Steam Deck because I'm just like, I don't want to spend 19 again because I own it in three places. Like, why would I buy it again right. for full price? And then sure enough, the day after I'm thinking about that, this thing goes on sale for $5 on Steam. And I'm like, well, that's where I want it because I want to put it on my Steam Deck. Yeah. And so yeah. I immediately uh, paid for it, downloaded it. Uh, it's part of my life now. And I just want to recommend it. It's it's great. If you, if you miss those kinds of racers, you know, arcade... There's a clock running, although not always. Sometimes there's a there's different modes. So there's some that yeah, feel just like check, Outrun, where you're points, racing a right. clock. Yeah, and there's some where you're doing more traditional, like modern racing stuff. Um, you got to pick up fuel canisters, or else you're going to run out of gas on the third lap or something. Um, right. 
cool cars, neat graphics. Uh, just a rad little game. So pick you it know up. what's in, in fuel pickups looks like. You know what? Yep. Uh, I man, I love pole position so much back in the day when I was a kid. But that's a really hard game to play now. Mm-hmm. It is really hard to go back and find joy in the pole position. Oh yeah, pole position is <laughs> rough. I mean, it's it's a, it's I, a. I see it as a really important game. You know, landmark oh, game. Super important. Love yeah. the cartoon. But man, just the gameplay of it, it kind of reminds me that this is just barely one step away from those little uh those little tabletop games mm-hmm. with the with the band that runs over and over again mm-hmm. like a paper towel in a in a men's bathroom. Yeah. Where it's just the same track and you just like have a little steering wheel and you make your little guy <laughs> go left and right. Yeah. It's kind of not far from there. What are those what's that stupid thing called? They you know what I'm talking about, right? Those yeah. little yeah. old tabletop hardware pieces of crap i don't know what they're called but i know what you mean you, you were like racing with like etch a sketch kind of th- yeah. almost weird looking thing yeah yeah it's just, i don't know what those are called weird. what were those called i guess they were just kinetic uh parlor game type things like yeah i don't, I don't know. know they were they were uh they were both uh f- fascinated me before i really got into the video games uh but also about five seconds later you're like wow this is this is trash yeah it's, just- <laughs> it's been bad trash they're not great bad um, trash. so you're not wrong um this also features turbo stuff. The wipeouts are just like, I mean, they really just lifted this from oh, what yeah, people like about so Outrun. It's so smooth and it's got, it's got, uh, it's, oh, what is it? What do you call it? Cell shading? Yeah, it's the, all cell shaded, I guess. I guess it oh. is. Yeah. I guess you call that cell yep. shading. The effects are definitely cell shaded types. Yeah. But it's neat, though. Stuff it's really neat. And uh, like I said, yeah. that price is hard to beat. There's just some kind of flash sale they're having right now. So uh, normally Actually, 20 bucks. Yeah. Go grab it. Uh, this right. is uh Horizon Chase Turbo. Turbo, is Turbo also in the name, or I believe so. Horizon, Horizon Chase yeah. Turbo is correct, yeah. And they've got DLC, they've got I think the new, I think the pack on Steam just comes with everything. I'm not sure, right? Anyway, worth getting, especially at five bucks. It's stupid cheap, yeah. Um, and then when's the last thing? Oh, I started, pl- <laughs> I don't know why I did this. So I, was, I know where I did this. I was hunting down games for the Steam Deck that I haven't touched in a while or have never played mm-hmm. and just wanted to see what's out there. I'm like, well, I never did play this. Why? I don't know. But let's see how it is on the Steam Deck. So I've been downloading a lot of those games, having a really fun time kind of making a list of what I think is cool for that device. And, um, you know, we did a whole show on DuckTales. Remember that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Capcom I DuckTales do business. That. I had completely yeah. forgotten. We talked about it on the show, but not a, not deep. But we, you know, I sort of had forgotten that they had this remake or remaster that they made yeah. in like 2012, 2013. Yeah. Um, called DuckTales Remaster, I think, or Remastered. I think it's got Remaster. I think you're right. And it's got voice actors from the show all doing their parts. It's, uh, you know, modern graphics and all of that. And I thought, well, I never did fire this up and try this. Let's just see how this oh, ends. Oh, did you do it? Did you I fire did. it up? I did. I already had the the game. I don't I don't know when I got it, but um the probably a code. Was it or, root beer or not root beer? What'd you think? Uh it was it was well, I hate root beer, so it was not root beer. It's good. I liked it. <laughs> I liked it a lot. You know why? Because the original game is balls hard, which we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the reason that I fr- get so frustrated with that game is it's just too unforgiving. Like, I actually want to enjoy yeah. myself and I feel like I'm dying every four seconds. I got to start everything over all the time. This game features like three difficulty levels, and one of them is yes. checkpoint revival, basically. Right. And that's fine with me. I'll play that way. And it's so much more enjoyable not having to worry about redoing everything if you lose your three lives yeah. so you get to so, you get to uncheck that hurt me plenty yeah i got gotcha. you that's exactly right um yeah. and if you're a fan of the old show which you know i sort of was a little little younger for me when i when it came out so i, I kind of missed it its first time around i think it's super charming now and that new one on disney plus is great um oh yeah it's so good. but uh it was a fun opportunity to play a thing that i i admire the humor and the storytelling and uh, the fact that this is all voice acted and stuff really didn't hurt. And it feels like a game that just came out. Like, it looks great. Yeah, 2012 really is not that long ago, but um, I guess... It's it, t- almost 10 years, Scott. I guess it... 10 no, years. It literally is 10 years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, look at that. I, I'm with you, though. It, 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 but I, now, see, I'm on the other side, though. I think it tastes like root beer. It's delicious. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you liked the root beer. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I liked the um, Coke Zero flavor uh, unit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm trying to say... Hey, uh, so in addition to that, what happened to your C16 CPU? I don't understand. What happened? 
Oh, so here's my so oh. uh, spoiler. Next week we're going to be looking at some Commodore 64 games, and I thought, well, I better see if I can get that uh, Commodore 16 I have, which was actually released after the Commodore 64. Little faster processor, less memory. Uh, and, uh, I, I plugged it in and unfortunately I got the flashing gray screen. And what I looked up to find that out, uh, was that the CPU, which is one of the very common problem on these 60s, 16s, uh, is dead. Unfortunately, those are hard to find original pieces, but there are some alternatives out there. So I may tackle that probably not before the next show. But I was very disappointed. I it I thought it worked the last time I had it plugged in, and it didn't just this time. So bummer. And I've been looking. And I thought, well, no big deal. I'll just find me a Commodore sixty four. You know everything. Just like everything else, every th- inflation mm. and demand has increased all the prices on the Commodore sixty four. And I'm just trying to find something reasonable at this point. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see, or I will tackle this, uh, possible replacement for the, uh, CPU on this thing. The bad, I, bad thing about that is though, not as many games were developed for the Commodore 16. Uh, and there, there's actually a 64, uh, upgrade for the memory on it. Uh, but even then you'll run into a lot of problems with gaming and stuff. And that's both, most of what we do here. I am interested in getting this thing running. Do you have a problem? I have a real problem, Scott. Mm. I have a real problem. I actually found some Commodore 16s that were reasonably priced that are working right now. And I thought, I should just order that, and then I don't have to mess with none of this stuff. Mm, mm. And then I'm like, that's not Brian. (laughs) Brian Brian can't let this... I have a real problem, man. (laughs) I don't like like that I have any electronic in my... I don't like to throw away electronics, and I don't like... When they don't work, yeah, I can't just order another C sixteen, and then put this to the side for parts. I just can't do it. I think I could do if I was that set on getting a C sixteen, which I'd forgotten existed. To be honest, I forgot they even did that. right. Such Probably. weird, weird marketing, right? It's like it was. It was a weird. They were, they were trying to. They were trying to fight a market that didn't exist. They were yeah. trying to find a cheaper way. But no, if, if, if there was nobody else doing anything cheaper, it was just dumb. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. It was really dumb. But my point is, like, uh, if it were, I think I'm the opposite. If I was for sure going to try to get my C16 game on, right? I think I would track one down and then use that for parts. I think I'd be fine with that. <sighs> but I get it. You have, an, you have an, this weird attack. I'm not saying it's even bad or it's not a pejorative. You have an attachment to your stuff. I don't. It's, it's, it's stupid because I was like, why do I feel this way? Does this have sentimental value to me? And I'm like, no, it does not. My dad just gave this to me because he found one in a garage sale one time and he picked it up for a few dollars. And me and my dad never even had a Commodore 16 back in the day. We had 64s and Vic 20s and a 128. Mm-hmm. And so that's where our love comes from. And so he, he was just like, he just gets, hey, whatever, you know, it's like, hey, if you want to get rid of it, whatever, it doesn't matter. I just found it, found it really cheap. And I was like, okay. So there's no sentimental value either. So I just don't understand why I can't stand the idea. I think it all goes back to Star Wars and the 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 droids. I've I've imbued life into all of these smart electronics. Yeah. And I just I I it's 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 like I I can't do it. You can't, can't just replace can't. an R two unit. You you want yeah. R two D two like he's it's yours. Got a, it's I got it. a bad motivator unit on it, and I I I can't I can't just you know. Take the red give one. The little, yeah. I can't just give it to the little uh, druid guys out in the desert. Yeah, F <laughs> druid guys. <laughs> I love calling them the little druid guys. Uh, it makes Star Wars fans angry. Yeah, it's Utini is uh, is druid for druid guys. That's yeah. the word. Right, right. Um, I'm looking at, so there's this video compilation I'm showing the chat right now, which is 100, uh, where's the title? 100 Commodore 16 games in 10 minutes, and they're just showing them rapid succession. I'm shocked yeah. there were 100 of these believe it or not the cpu in these machines was actually faster than the commodore 64 even though you couldn't render hardware wise uh sprites you could render them in by the cpu and it was actually better looking actually it actually was performed better it, oh, it was it was trying to hit a price point of fifty dollars ended up being a hundred dollars and they just couldn't move them in the u.s couldn't do it you know but uh yeah. oh my gosh summer games I forgot that. Oh, well, Summer Games is so good. We may talk about that next week. That was been in that's oh. been in my list. I've been trying to find things that were 
you know, exclusive or primarily known for the Commodore 64. Because uh, there's there's a lot of ports that were you know widely spread elsewhere that were bigger sellers. Yeah, that's a little so. bit of a hint, everybody. Next week we're doing Commodore 64's top five, and uh, there may be that's a little play arguing. retros top five. Yeah, Don't play retros. Out. Don't add us. Okay, everything will be fine. All right, Brian. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, you got a Mr. Snacks. What's that? Yeah, I got Mr. Snacks. So I got my little Mr. Snacks. So we talk about this from time to yeah. time, Mr. FPGA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, so this is a little, a, a dongle. Thank you, uh, Tondagosa for turning me on to this, watching you play all those fun accessories with your, uh, Mr. Got Me Turned On. And I'm like, yeah, I need to do that. And so as you can tell here, I got a dongle, uh, that is a PlayStation Dongle, you're saying so Tondragosa's dongle turned you on? Is that what you're saying? That's right. It did. It did. Okay. So now I can plug right. in my PlayStation controller hardware, any of those accessories, and play it on uh, the the PlayStation Core that is on here. And it's fun because these things all use HDMI uh, uh, what's it, format, I suppose you would call it, but it's not. It's just data. And that's how you plug these in. So, yeah. Uh, there's other accessories I can buy, too, but this is the new Snacks that is on, I believe it's Mr. Add-ons. I believe it's very good. I'm a little surprised it's not all Thunderbolt or uh, USB-C, uh, you know, uh, whatever the new spec yeah, the, is for Thunderbolt. I'm surprised. Yeah, the other side is, of course, USB, so I can plug in for power and oh, stuff. Oh, right, right, but, right. Um, so, right. yeah, so I'm I'm pretty excited about playing with that. So if, if you're out there and you know of uh, some wicked cool PlayStation accessory, other than that dual stick thing, which I'm thinking about getting... Um, let me know. I yeah. would, I like to mess around a little bit with yeah. some, uh, good PlayStation accessories. Yeah. And sign up for Tondra uh, accessories. his, uh, um, unofficial, Ton, uh, his Ton talk, his own, his, his only fans where he shows his dongle. <laughs> yeah. This is dongle, dongle.com. You're going to get a kick out of that. Yeah. Well, that'll be great. All right. Ton dongle. We are, uh, now ready to dig deep into the nineties phenomenon that was Beavis and Butthead gaming. <laughs> as weird as it sounds, there's a lot here, so stick, uh, stick around here. To... Shall we play a game? Sure, let's start with the Genesis. So there are three specific tie-in games based on the animated television series Beavis and Butthead, which, by the way, is having a bit of a resurgence, so we thought it'd be fun to tackle it here on the show. Uh, these were released and published by Viacom New Media in 1994, Super Nintendo, Genesis slash Mega Drive, and the Game Gear. Um, there was also a Game Boy version that would come out later, right? Yeah, like '98. Yeah, which right. is and it was so not weird. Uh, was not attached. Those first three that you mentioned were all tied in together uh, with the same basic storyline, same basic settings, and some of the same weapons and things, but totally, totally different radically games. different games. Yeah, they're very different games. It's so weird to me because this happened a yeah. lot. We we haven't really got into this much in previous episodes, but like. Disney's Aladdin, which was very popular on the Genesis, and that was the kind of the version du jour at the time, was part of the reason it was it liked more is it was just a better game than the SNES one. You'd say, well, why? Was it slower? Did it look as good? No. It's a different <laughs> game. It's a totally yeah. different game. And that was a thing they did. Like, like even in our NHL 94 episode, we think we talked about this a little bit, the Genesis versions and the yeah, SNES totally versions weren't different. always just ports. They were sometimes just from the ground up Someone else did it. And yeah, different developers. Different. We had three different developers on these three different titles, and each one of them had their own little take on how to do it. Yeah, and so they did just that. First one I'm going to play a little sound from is the Genesis version of the game, which was called Beavis and Butthead. came out in 1994, uh, a notable year for me because that was the year my oldest daughter was born, which sounds insanely long ago now. Oh, you have it, it there? Look at you. He's got the box. People at home, yeah, Brian has the, the box. I've got the original uh, uh, Genesis version of the Beavis and Butthead, the you cart. I, I play a little bit, and it actually goes to show you how different the real experience is because when I was playing this on the real hardware versus the uh, RetroArch emulation, believe it or not, this game requires a little bit of uh, a little bit of speed. Yeah. A little bit of speed sometimes. Yeah, it takes a little bit of stuff. Anyway, here's yeah. what that sounded like in your... Boy, howdy, you're going to hear a difference between this and the SNES version of the game. But Oh, yeah. Here you go. <laughs> Pull my finger. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Come on, Beavis. Pull it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> and then this, this bit. 
This version is a little more metal than this Super <laughs> NES. It is. But the Super NES version of that intro is like, I don't know, kind of. It's jaunty. It's, it's jaunty. It sounds yeah. like the Nintendo. It sounds like uh, I don't know if I don't know if any Japanese developers were involved. It was uh, created by Real Time Associates, who did the Ah Real Monster games. Yeah. Um, and it felt a lot more. It didn't feel as metal to me, the music, even though the SNES far superior audio. Oh, way, way superior. Oh. We'll get you'll hear it in a minute. It's so much better yeah. um, than this. But here's the basic story of this game. Uh, they had guar tickets. <laughs> yes, they did. Guar, 1994, baby. You had yep. to have some guar tickets. And they got shredded. I don't want to spoil anything. But they There's need to no go find all the here. pieces, put them together so they can still go to the Guar concert. Now, you might say, yeah. oh, cool, they got some, you know, Guars using their name in here, and that's fine. But one thing I noticed right out of the gate, and this is true of most of these games, gone are the Metallica and gone are the oh, yeah. ACDC shirts that these two are famous for wearing. Instead, one is set, one is called Skulls. Skulls. And the other one yeah. is uh, hard rock, hard rock, something like, or something is like it that. Hard rock or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so it lame. Made me sad. It made me sad too. I get it. You'd have to give rights to to use that stuff in a game form, and you'd have to pay Metallica and ACDC yeah. a bunch of royalties. I don't know what Death that. Rock. I don't know what that arrangement is with the cartoon because they're they definitely keep using that stuff now. Even today, um, they still keep that. Yeah, yeah, they're still using the same shirts uh, in 2022, but. Anyway, that was pretty interesting. Now, what's what's great about the Genesis version, at least I thought, it was an interesting hybrid of action and point-and-click sort of adventure puzzle stuff. Right. And to me, that was unique at the time for a game like this. I played this game yeah. back in the day, the one that you own there. And um, they have a bunch of real clips, voice clips, although horribly rendered, but still there. <laughs> um, lots of places Mike that Judge you recognize. doing all that audio work, right? Yeah, they got Mike Judge in studio to record a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Some of it I, they probably could take from B-roll and you know do whatever yeah, they need to yeah. do. But um, you could do two-player co-op, basically. Yeah. I never did that. Did single-player the whole time. And then when you do single-player, yeah. you pick Beavis or Butthead. Maybe it's just Butthead, and Beavis follows you. Um, right. the whole time, right? You, you can you can you can switch between them. I think, and this this is where it gets confusing and frustrating for the Sega Genesis. Um, uh, it's the the, the on different screens mm. and in different situations. You only had the ABC button. This is early. This is ninety four, and so you only had the ABC button and the start button in the D pad. Yep. And so sometimes you're doing something and you press one button and you're expecting a result and other times you get something else but you can't switch between beavis and butthead if you're playing by yourself yeah for sure which um, is important because there's there's life bars for both those guys and if either one of them dies you're dead but the the character you're controlling is probably going to get the lion's share of the damage so you can swap between the two and one gets low yeah and this in the game for fans of the cartoon featured locations and play like right now we're watching them at their place of work where they worked at whatever the name of that burger place What's burger world burger world and they're in there working it being terrible and the customers pissed and all that um but you got this weird like inventory system where it's like oh, i have french fries in my inventory yeah. i will drop it here and this guy will get his fries now i've passed this this you know this thing i've gotten money whatever um oh he's gonna puke don't don't yeah don't forget <laughs> this is how you get the one of the first tickets you get you uh you find at the in the dumpster behind the the burger world you find a rat you stick it in there with the fries because this angry customer wants some food yeah. you give it to him he throws up guess what you found part of the guar tickets that Mr Anderson ripped up yep it, yeah it's in it's because it was part of the, the the rat or whatever yeah um yep. and uh they the game kind of plays like that it's fine it's an okay time I think it plays a little stiff and awkward now kind of hard to i don't know it's hard to explain it's just doesn't it's not great now it's, okay it's 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 ganky is what i would call it it feels undercooked and i found out this week it probably was undercooked uh those guys over there who did the genesis version which would have been radical entertainment yeah. were told were very excited they were very excited first of all that they were looking for something a little bit more detailed than what they thought they were going to do mtv was excited tell you who wasn't excited radical entertainment upper the upper guys they yeah. didn't want it 
They were like, no, this is dumb. We should have done something simple. If you go even $1 over budget, you're fired. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, it got hamstringed right out of the gate with, you know, you're only going to be able to do so much. So, yeah. I don't so think on they the, got on the one hand, it's like, hey, a license we can be creative with. And on the other hand, they're like, yeah, yeah be creative, but be cheap creative. Okay. Yeah. The, spend your heroes money. over here with MTV and Mike Judge getting involved and everything else. You're like... This is so cutting edge. It's so hot. But then the management is going, hey, hey, hey. Keep it down, fellas. Hey, that's my best fat Albert Allen you'll ever hear. Hey, right, hey, hey, hey. hey. Uh, <laughs> next up, we got the uh, Game Gear version came out the same year. And I would just like you to listen carefully to the differences in audio quality. All right. So at least, right. so Genesis starts like this. <laughs> Pull my finger. Okay. They kind of sound like, you know, they're fine. They're a little crusty. A little <laughs> Check out Game Gear, dude. <laughs> All right, give it a sec here. You got to hear this. It's actually pretty impressive. I think, I mean, look, 8-bit systems were capable of some some interesting stuff, and I think that's fine yeah. for what it is. That's that's new FX doing that stuff. That Those guys made that crew ball that I didn't know anything about. You said you'd play before with a Motley Crew pinball. Oh, I was Motley like, Crew what? There's a Motley Crew pinball? Yeah, that game's great. Nothing wrong with Motley Crew pinball. When we do our yeah. favorite pinball uh, games of the uh, of the century or whatever, we got to do right, right. We got to do that. It's got Motley Crue songs in it. Yeah, I mean it's in, not in a you know a digital format. This I will say it's not the greatest pinball machine or pinball video game ever made, but it's right. fun and has the stupid metal attitude and you know yes. is over the top. And so I can see why you would hire these guys for that. I think there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Now listen to this voice sample though from the Game Gear that just I still don't even know what they said. So listen to this. <laughs> Okay, I heard whoa. All right. Yeah, so, whoa, whoa. I, whoa, I caught. Uh, Butthead said whoa, but I couldn't hear what Beavis Let's said. Let's try it one more time. Check out Beavis again. <laughs> yeah, that's, cool. That's awesome. That's awesome, maybe. Uh, I was like, trying to think of something. Like, you know, yeah, cool. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me try it one more time. It's cool. It doesn't suck. I think it's yeah, cool. Might be. Oh, it's so It bad. might be yeah, cool. Chat room says jackpot. No, that's not what he says. <laughs> Anyway, that was your Game Gear game. and But it was so colorful, and it was a simplified version. I mean, it was just, you know, left to right scrolling, avoid uh, creatures that are both at your feet and your head. Yep. Pick up pick up uh, money as you go along. Every time you get hit, you get a little cut scene where uh, they, they make some kind of little quip. It's terrible, but the animations are hilarious, and, you know, the artwork... It actually looks like Beavis and Butthead. I was actually pretty impressed with the game well, gear it game does, for what it was. It does until they show their heads up close. The Beavis is wrong. It does not look right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. But Butthead's it's fine. Beavis. Beavis looks wrong. Like right here, he looks fine. Them them side scrolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Beavis looks good side scrolling. I think Butthead looks wrong side scrolling. He's, right. he's too weird on the profile. Like look at that flat head, foot looking face. But <laughs> if you <laughs> if you do the whole like right here where they show them you know their up close faces in portrait mode, Beavis is broken. Right, that looks wrong. Yeah, yeah, all those birds dropping the eggs. Yeah, oh, if you've ever if you've ever played this game, Gear, when be prepared to be both entertained and annoyed, which is probably the best description for all of these uh, versions, no matter how you look at it. I, they they all have annoyances. But they all have some little bit of value to them too. They all did pretty good job at conveying Beavis and Butthead. They all felt yeah. you know real true and genuine to the uh, to the characters yeah. and the locations. Yeah, and this was the harder the game themes. too. I think this is the more difficult of the three of the three of that era. Right. I think this game was the hardest to play. But I that I I think. Uh, Probably, I don't mean I don't mean uh, broken reaction. hard. I mean like actually right. difficult. Like right, I, yeah. I think I think as far as action goes, timing and action, I think this is the hardest one. Uh, the the puzzle elements and uh, the gankiness of the Genesis made it extremely difficult at at points and frustrating. Uh, and the SNES was just it was just it was a much easier experience oh just no a, doubt across the board just yeah. much easier sometimes that makes me wonder if nintendo like says look if you're going to put it on our platform you got to dumb it down some 
Yeah, you got it. And you would think so, right? The, the, the look where they were targeting. It, the, originally, they wanted to go with the Genesis because the Genesis crowd was the ones who were watching Beavis yeah. and Butthead. Not that the SNES crowd wasn't watching it, but it tended to skew a little bit younger. No, it's perfect for and, Sega. Sega was all yeah. about the, you know, we're edgy now the, and we do yeah, edgy we're things. The, we're the post preteens. We're we're yeah. full on teens and up to you know up to the the man child so yeah. yeah it worked for them anybody else yeah. could watch that did you watch that documentary i told you to watch the the um damn it what's it called the damn i love the damn it sega <sighs> anyway it's on paramount are you plus about console wars? Are you talking it's, about it's not else? console wars but it's like that and it's all about okay. sega and their their competition with with nintendo uh mm. during the late um, uh, late part of the NES years and then through the Genesis years and just kind of how the stuff went. It's right. freaking great. Highly yeah. recommend it. And I'm, look, I just got Paramount Plus. I'm actually a little surprised it's as good as it is. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, did I watch that? I think I did watch it. Maybe you did. About I've gotten, I've had so much of that information pumped in my head over the years. I can't recall. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to say. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about this one. This is going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right so as you can tell super nintendo had a little bit of a better audio chip <laughs> yeah um, a lot better i'm Thanks, not sure father I, of playstation i'm not sure i like the music as much um but it i think i like the voice metal yeah. like you said earlier the genesis version felt metal this feels a little more upbeat yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I also spent a lot of time in the school in this one. It was my memory. Oh, I I hated it because the, the skateboarders, uh, oh, what is that? What's the guy's, what's the bully's name? The He's not oh. even a bully. He's like already graduated. He's that old school. guy. What's he even doing yeah. there? He's the old guy that keeps showing up. Um, He reminds me of the uh, McConaughey's character in um, <laughs> uh, stay, or Dazed and Confused, where he's still showing yeah, up at the yeah. high school and dating girls and stuff. I can't that, think of his name, though. Turd. Uh oh, God! You got to join his gang in the yep. in the virtual stupidity. What is his stupid name? I can't I don't remember. Know. Anyway, Todd. I, I, Todd, Todd says, "Keep a thirty. Thank you, Todd. Yeah, and they all thought yeah, yeah, yeah. Beavis and and Bud had think Todd's cool Todd. and they want to be like Todd. And the answer, the truth of that is, don't ever be like Todd. Todd's the freaking worst. Oh, Todd, Todd's the worst. Yeah, he's bad. Nobody who's graduated oh. and has a mustache should come back to high school right. to do anything unless right. you work there. Okay." Right. That's just the he's doing janitorial duties. Now, on the SDS, uh, unlike the Genesis where you have to earn your uh, weapons, except for your farts and your burps. We didn't talk about that. There's no. not there's no farts and burps in this one. You you have unlimited farts and burps in the Genesis version. Yeah. Uh, you do you get the bat with the baseball glove on it. Uh, did you watch that episode? The one where uh they're they're watching American Gladiators. Yeah. Remember that show? Right? Oh yeah, totally and, remember all yeah. that. Yeah. I love that episode. Are you like, kidding? Yeah, it's a great episode. You know, they're all enthralled with the fact that this, you know, they're they're seeing lady gladiator butts. And so they go outside and they and they make their own gladiator out of bats in glove boxing gloves. So this is the kind of stuff you'd get in all these Beavis and Butthead games. Huge nods to to just all the different games. They could have just put anything in there, right? They could have done like they did with Lisa in the Simpsons game. What they didn't give her a saxophone, they gave her something stupid. What was it? It was like jump rope or something. Yeah, totally. It was lame. It was but lame. here we got uh, yeah, it was it was something pretty cool. It's uh so one thing I wanted to say um about the new show, uh, just yeah. so people could get into this. Um the old show, uh when they would do a chunk of story and then they would have a break. Yes. And in that break, they would commentate on MTV videos, actual music videos. Yes, they were always yes. very funny. Well, I wondered, I'm like, well, what are they going to do with the new one? They're not going to do videos. That seems dumb. Maybe they just won't do it. They'll just skip past it. And like they did with the DVD release, they'll just not have it. Yeah. And then they did the thing I did not expect. But now that I know they've done it, it's perfect. Right. Um, because the movie moves them from the nineties into 2022. They actually time travel. Yes. So they're the, they're straight up Beavis and Budhead out of the nineties, but they now live in our time and they don't make too big of a deal out of it. It's just the truth. That's just where they live now. <laughs> and so instead of music videos, they watch YouTube channel or YouTube videos and react to them yeah. while they're on the couch. And it's perfect. Logical. It's perfect. Perfect. It's what and you I'm, would do if, if YouTube was back yeah. in the 90s. You would have done that. 
Yeah. You know? I, I'm actually curious because in the original run, by the way, the the Beavis and Butthead uh, cartoon ran from like 92 to what, like 97 or 8 or so. Uh, and then they took a break. And then 2011, they came back with an additional season. And now they're on their ninth season, I believe. Something like that. Anyway, in the original ones, Mike Judge pretty much wrote all of the commentary parts. That was not done by a committee. He did all of that on his own. So I'm curious to know if that's, you know, cause it always made it elevated a little bit. Mike judge is a hilarious guy. He he's, seems to be into hilarious. it. I, the, the interview I heard not, not long ago about this resurgence or this new uh, thing plus movie was how excited right. he was that this was all coming back. Cause it's like get, yeah. getting back to his roots. There's a simplicity to it. He loved doing it when it was a thing that, that King of the Hill are like his favorite years. And, you know, even though he went on to make a bunch of movies everyone loves and made that series for HBO, the um, it's called Silicon Silicon Valley. Yeah, Silicon Valley. Yep, did all yep. this amazing work. Getting back to do this is like, it's clearly a labor of love for him. So I wouldn't be surprised yeah. to hear that he writes all that stuff too. Wouldn't show Yeah, me. I think I think this is, you know, very natural for him. He's, he's like I said, he's, you know, he's, he's, I think he's hilarious. Now, of course, with the delivery of it, it may not be everybody's cup of tea. No. You know, because it, it really is a couple of, you know, hormone ridden uh, teenage boys who are, you know, never grow up. There's and so, morons. yeah, that could totally be annoying. I mean, yeah. he's got these annoying voices that he does, but the commentary is pretty good, especially if you're looking at it through the the, the lens of, of a couple of little perverts, right? Yeah, you, <laughs> you, basically, you basically nailed it. And once again, we would say... I know there are people out there who have zero yeah. interest in Beavis and Butthead, but you just happen to catch Brian and Scott, who happen to be super fans of Beavis and Butthead. Yes. We like this stuff a lot. Be. Huge fan. I could watch it right now and be perfectly happy the rest of the night. There are going to be people out there that never want to see it ever again. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. I think that if you watch the current season, and it may be the only episode you may be able to stomach watching but is really interesting. Beavis in the second episode of this season uh, encounters fire and it is really different and it is really smart and it feels very modern. And I think that if I think if you watch that one, I think you might go, OK, maybe I see some of where this is. Speaking of which, there was a whole time when Beavis and Butthead got in trouble and uh you know beavis has this a fascination with fire yeah. and then there was that tragedy that happened with that five-year-old who ended up burning his uh two-year-old sister in, a, in that fire oh, yeah. during the initial run yeah. of beavis and butthead yeah, and yeah. for a long time beavis couldn't even say fire he had to say stuff like fryer fryer <laughs> and he was messing with the fryer at burger yeah. world yeah. uh all that stuff's behind us now they can they can you know do it yeah, you know what was really going on back then? I don't know. Tragic story that the kid died, but I don't think it was, you know, I certainly don't think it was part of, you know, I don't think Beavis and Bud had told them to do it, but no. it is interesting in that episode to watch how everything goes down. Yeah. Uh, I'm real, just saying it's, it's real interesting. Real quick, the little side conversation happening in the chat about how the, the, the version of YouTube in the nineties would have been, uh, animated gifs. I would argue that <laughs> that is not true. Even though the animated gif was invented in 1987, that's true. Right. And It'd it be was, WMVs that you would have ripped off a CD. I'm not even <laughs> sure. I'm not even sure then you'd have that. Like we're talking 87. You're probably that right. thing was invented that year. 94. Oh, in 87. Okay. Yeah, 94. Yeah. We didn't have. I mean, you had BBSs and stuff, and they had some gift stuff on it, but they were huge and took forever to download. Like I don't. Yeah. I don't buy that. You would. You would be whipping the llama's ass, all right? You would because, be whipping the llama's uh, ass. You're right. Yeah, because right about this time, we started getting, uh, in addition to a lot of video games, we started getting a lot of, every, it was almost a game getting screensavers and skins for WinApp. That yeah. was just like, it yeah. was a game you would play. It's like, ooh, how can I skin this thing? I want to skin the llama's ass. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you want to do with the llama's ass. I've heard. I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> We're now moving on to the best game of the series, okay? That's not even part of the three series thing. This was, um, where is it? Here it is, the PC version in 1995. The first one, it was called Beavis and Butthead and Virtual Stupidity. Came out on the PlayStation ah. and, and uh, the PC, although the PlayStation game only happened in Japan, I think? Right, only happened in Japan. However, there is, did you get any audio from that? I sent you a, a, a video of a little bit of that Japanese Beavis and Butthead dubbing, which is freaking amazing. Oh, I'll play uh, that. But there is a 
there is a fan based uh, uh, a pack yeah. that you can actually put on that PlayStation uh, Japanese only game so that you'll get Americanized Beavis and Butthead, even though it's not Mike Judge. Well, I'm going to play a little bit of it. I'll see what happens because I actually have the main release here that you you gave me right. uh, as, okay, as yeah, presented yeah. on. Uh, What's it called? Freaking. They even read. There's even like this great introduction by a Japanese uh, narrator who does like the whole disclaimer at the top yeah. of it. It's just amazing. It's gonna take a minute to download. I'll let it. Do oh that. yeah. Okay. So you're doing it through there. Oh that's. Oh that's right. I did the one I sent you. That's yeah. Right. That is what yeah you this sent is me. the. I'll yeah, let this it. This is the one. I'll let it download. There's probably a video. Actually, you know what? I'll do that instead. Let me look for the video. Yeah. There's there's definitely a, any anywhere you look at uh, you know just look up that Beavis and Butthead virtual stupidity. PlayStation, but uh, it'll probably give you the Japanese virtual version. Virtual stupidity, Japan. All right, but let's... this is the pinnacle for me <laughs> for the this. Beavis and Butthead games. Let's it this. gets no better than this point. <laughs> <click this adventure. laughs> That's Beavis. Yeah, love it. Wait, let's hear the. Okay. Island <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. I want to play so the whole good. thing in Japanese now. And you can because there's really no voice dialogues that give you, they don't give you too much uh, hint really in this point, point and click at misadventure. It's, it's a lot of uh, trial and error, point, click. Uh, oh. You know, see, see what works, see what doesn't work. Yeah, and, this uh, is Monkey Island uh, kind of game for those who are wondering what it, we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, Monkey Island is a great comparison. Yeah. 1995, so it's a good, good area to yeah, be. Yeah, for sure. Probably uh, this is what really learned as lesson. <laughs> so there's actual voice samples. This is all Mike Judge. Yeah. I actually have a little better file of it here. Let me play. And this would be the the PC version because the PC version was released. Uh, in the yeah, US. yeah, that was the English version. Check this out. Yeah. Let's get started, people. Hold still, damn it! Uh, Beva? Yeah. It's dead. Oh, yeah. So, like, straight up, you know, Mike Judge voiced, like, Beavis and Butthead yeah. stuff. They're not messing around. And, and a special guest star by your favorite, Daria. Maybe if you didn't like Beavis and Butthead, you did like I the love, flip side. I it, love it, Daria. Mike Judge loves doing this. He yeah. loves doing the... Do you remember that? The Was it the good family? Because there was, there was a very conservative Hank Hill... Uh, but then there was this liberal family that they they ran for a couple of seasons. Did you ever uh, see that? It only ran a, a single season. Yes, I watched the whole thing. Right. It was called The Good Family, yeah. and it was, it was um, yeah, it was it was good. Um, I, I think they probably, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why that didn't last. That one probably had legs, and they just, I don't know, they couldn't work it out. But King yeah. of the Hills, you know, freaking it, classic. Any extreme is what like uh, Mike Judge likes holding that mirror up to the extremes and going, hey, look. Yeah. You're just being ridiculous. And I love Daria. Daria was a spinoff that he produced, but yeah. didn't, you know, wasn't directly writing or directing and whatever. And it was a different animation style and all that. But, you know, Daria was in their class. They had a spinoff show called Daria. Daria was brilliant. I loved it. Yeah. Um, very smart. Yeah. I could go for more of that these days, in fact. But this game, this game, I remember being really cool. And I played it on PC back in the day. Um, and what I liked about it was it was taking one of my favorite genres at the time, which is kind of point and click adventure. And applying it to this stupid premise. Mm -hmm. And it worked. It was fun. You would solve puzzles in really satisfying ways. And you would advance, you know, the story by, you know, trial and error. And trying to figure out what goes where. And collecting inventory and trying that inventory on stuff. Like, here's a key. Will it work on this lock? That kind of stuff that you're used to from Monkey Island or whatever. Space Quest, those kind of games. Yeah. And um, it's and what good. makes those games work is that you're rewarded even if you don't get it right. Yeah. Even if it's not the answer, you get rewarded with some witty dialogue or at least, you know, humorous dialogue. Yeah. And uh, it works here really well. I also think the art is great. It's it's just a step up. It looks like stuff right from the show. There are uh, yeah. the, the beginning is animated and has actual, uh, you know, cell animated stuff thrown mm -hmm. in there. Because, again, we're on CDs now. You can do this stuff. Yeah, and, uh, lots I of great. Uh, there's actually I, di I didn't do it, but I heard that you can uh, on the CD. There's like a bunch of there's move files on there, so the yeah. movie files of actual production stuff they were doing behind the scenes. I meant to go back and uh, try to find some of those things, but yeah, I, I love that. Like I said, hands down, 
this is the most satisfying game. It's not just the the point click game. There's it's broken up in nice little mini games which you can unlock and then you can go back and play it just by the mini games. I played this on my Windows XP Virtual Box, by the way. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> and it worked pretty good out of the box, believe it or not. And that's not always true uh, with these things. Sometimes that's true. I wouldn't mind like a remaster of this. They're probably never going to do it. Maybe the show will be really popular for a comeback and they'll do it. But my favorite thing about right. it was the pointer, which is often, a, you know, for most of these games, like a finger or a hand or yeah. or whatever. In this case, it's Butthead's hand. But when yeah. you run, when you, when it crosses something you can interact with, it turns to like the rocker goat symbol. Metal fingers! Yeah, metal devil fingers. horns! Yeah. Yes. It's real stupid. It's great, though. It's real stupid, but I, I loved it. But you're right. The the uh the puzzle solving's you know is pretty good uh and is satisfying is in hawk and loogies i it was that was that was a lot of fun that's one <laughs> of the ways you get out of the school no no spoilers i don't suppose but why not whatever this game's from 1995 yeah uh this is a retro game show if you did you're gonna ex you should expect some spoilers. yeah expect some uh, spoilers that's what we do yeah but uh yeah so you so you have to hawk a loogie which is what the name of the mini game uh, but you have to be able to do it once it turns green. Now, I I think you get a green loogie for every 10, 10 points that you score, which is, you know, if you, you, you hit it, you hit your what your target is. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but then you get a green one, yeah. and then that's how you have to hit the principal who's walking back and forth outside the school. Uh, so you, you can... Oh, so you, yeah. yeah. So you distract him so that you can get out of the school because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get... Uh, you're trying to help Todd. You're trying to you're trying to do something with Todd. I think you hear that Todd is doing something, yeah. and you're trying to get out and join Todd's gang or something. <laughs> yeah. But it's... It's a it's it's a hoot. It's a riot. Like I said, it is the best game out of all of these, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I would put it. Okay, you know those, um, the fractured butthole. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the South, South Park, Park things and all that. To me, it's it's yeah. like a th those are modern versions of this. Uh, yeah. Different combat and stuff like the turn based in this fantasy one, and a little less of that in the in the hero one. But still, you know made up of actual animated sequences using real voice actors like really giving love to that part of all this i think is a right. is a big deal i would play this one again if i could do it easily i'll have to talk to you later. i, I will say bug. this though i think i didn't need it but when i when i play these games i played it on stream this week um and so it's, i always have you know people help me out a little bit especially with these games we're trying to get through them so we could talk about them um there was some gum that was stuck on the water fountain and there's no way i would have seen it there's no way i would have known to click where i clicked because there's no visual representation of the gum unless you just oh, happen gum. to click on the on the mouthpiece and i was like okay that that's too obtuse don't don't be that obtuse stupid game but the rest yeah. of it seemed to be pretty straight on those games i feel like all adventure games have cheap stuff like that it pisses me off Right, stupid it, gum. It drives me crazy. Also, I didn't know you said gum, but I now I know what you did. And now I know you said gum. gum. What I originally said. sounded like, look at the chat, they're losing it. It's something we all thought you said something else. Oh <laughs> my god, what did I say? I said gum. Well gum. What rhymes with, be you gum. said there was some gum stuck to the <laughs> drinking fountain. Hey, it's it's not their fault. They're primed. They're primed to Beavis and Butthead it right now in the chat room. I understand. I actually appreciate <laughs> That that's what you guys heard. <laughs> uh, I also heard it. Uh, all right. Uh, now let's talk about the terrible stuff. Just real quick. We'll rip through these. Uh, in 90 or 96, it would have been for Windows PC, Windows 95 yes. PC. Um, they had something called Beavis and Butthead Wiener Takes All. Yes. And uh, it was kind of a game show thing. Yeah. Kind of Jack. Uh, you don't know Jack is what I think they were trying to compete with. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Jeopardy. You don't know Jack. Kind yeah, of crap. I think because that, that's right short. around the time <clears throat> you started to see that stuff, yeah. and uh, it's terrible. I I played <sighs> this; it's not good. And here's the reason: um, I'll skip ahead so you can see kind of what it looks like. But it's them in front of a TV, and they put up yeah. questions, and then you got to answer them. And it's sort of a trivia contest thing, like you don't know Jack was originally. And I'm not talking about the more recent Jackbox stuff. I'm talking no, like back no, when no. you you don't know Jack was the was its own standalone thing. You could play up to three players, I yeah. think. But yeah. here's the problem. Audio matters a lot. Yeah. And if you're going to have them commentating about the contest, 
or the 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 game show and the game show is also going to be telling you things you need to be good at like balancing all that this is what that sounded like okay it's terrible enjoy good lord we've got to get those naked teens out of the water before they swim right up into that shark's nest get Whoa. ready for bodacious babes bouncing down beaches and again. brutal man-eating sharks <laughs> in an all-new episode of <laughs> beach <laughs> petrol you can't yep. hear either of them talking over each other it's horrible yeah that is terrible Ugh. now i'm actually i'm actually recognizing so i didn't get to play this because i didn't have a I didn't have a way to play Windows 95 game because I, I went in, I tried to play the Windows 95 uh, on my Windows XP and it said, no, you can't do it. Um, but this, I noticed that this one is the one that someone has recently taken and green screened that screen TV and people are running all kinds of crazy stuff on YouTube uh, using that kind of kind of memifying it on YouTube. Totally uh, fine. I, I didn't realize they should the do that. Um, and, okay. and, and the premise is fine. It's just executions really bad. Like I watched right. about a half hour of this before I had to turn it off because everything, it, the whole joke is they're going to give you some, some questions and have a whole setup and then Beavis right. and Butthead are going to commentary on top of that, either while you're picking your answers or whatever. And they chose to have them all at the same volume, all talking at the same time. You can't hear anybody do anything. It's horrendous. Yeah. It's bad. It's not good. It's, it's not bad. good. It's 1996. Yeah, you can have your Beavis and Butthead game back. Now, if you want to play the Game Boy game, which came out in 90, 99 of all years. Um, yeah, what, I think it was released in the EU in 98, and then 99 was here. I were believe. we even, what were we doing then with Beavis and Butthead? It, or not even Beavis and Butthead, but what were we doing with the Game Boy? We still had new Game Boy games in 99? I don't remember that. That's what I said. That's what I said, too. See, it says 98 there, but I think it's because it was European release first. Yeah. In the U.S., it was 99. But yeah, I was the same way. And this didn't even have the Game Boy Color support, the Super Game Boy Color support no. and all that stuff. I just, it made me mad. It's just an ugly... It made me mad, too, because it actually doesn't play very well either. But it's it's just such a late stage. Like, I'm trying to think. Yeah. 99? Didn't we already have a GBA? When the GBA came yeah, out. Yeah, I thought we I, I thought we at least had we not I know we had the Game Boy Color. We had the Super Game Boy, surely yeah. by that point in time. I don't know where this came from because Beavis and Buddy wasn't even on the air at this time, not in ninety nine. Okay, like, take it back. It was June eleven, two thousand one here. So it wasn't quite oh, here, really? but still, like well, give it a wait a year. It just seems weird yeah. to me. It seems it seems weird and it's ugly. Um, it sounds okay. Sounds, and sounds I will fun. say this. I will say this. I, I hated it, but I also found it compelling. <laughs> I, I couldn't stop right. playing it. I don't know why. And all it is is basically, you know, uh, getting past a bunch of gatekeepers so that you can uh, get out of detention. And you only can play one of the characters at a time, unlike a lot of these other games that allow you to choose between the two, Beavis or Butthead. You start off as Beavis, maybe get to play Butthead later. I don't know how to get that far. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was... Oh, just avoiding collisions with with the stupid nerds and the jocks yeah. was like impossible because this is this is a Game Boy game. Don't make collisions part of the game mechanic. Is there's the screen so small? I didn't like that part at all. Yeah, that should be. They should they should just had like a, a, a just a, a big over. It's like no collisions in Game Boy games. Yep, that's basically None. it. None, and they had a bunch of little. I don't know. I. I wanted to like this more than I did. I just didn't. I don't like even it. care. I mean, now in a retro way, it's like, fine, okay, cool, Game Boy game. I'll play that. Yeah. But it just, I don't know, this one rang empty for me. Uh, yeah, Beavis was, and like Butthead's Bunghole in One on the PC. That was a golf game. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. A little mini golf game. What yeah. about that? I, I mean, look, I like mini golf as much as the next guy, but how do you how do you feel about a, a bung? <laughs> <laughs> hole and bung <laughs> hole and bung or whatever was that the nip full bung hole in one sorry that's bung it. hole in one there you go and it was you know i think the first 3d game yeah um I mean, well it, well it was it was uh the 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 the, the yeah the, the course was in 3d but i think that the animations were in 2d like they had like an overlay yeah. uh on top of it with like the you know the, the 2d characters and stuff yeah. This was their but big the, the golf like, was in 3D. Yeah, the golf was in 3D. And the characters themselves, you know, you had a selection of like, there's Anderson, there's the principal, you got the... Odd. Now class, listen to my hippie talk guy. I forget his yep. name. MK. Yeah, that guy. Um, Not the same as the MK guy from no. South Park. South Park. No. His own brand of This MK. predates South Park by a good bit, but he does just say MK a lot. Yeah. Um, I didn't play this this week in preparation, but I kind of wanted to. 
and I kind of still I, do. I wanted to play it once again. Here we are with another Windows game. This time, 32-bit destroyed my dreams because my XP is 64-bit. Oh. I guess I'm going to have to make another virtual machine. <laughs> and this is the problem with PC gaming for me lots of times, retro style. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. People always think it's the most backwards compatible format right. for most games. And in some cases, I guess that's true. But when you're talking about, you know, retro stuff and playing it in the right environment, um, right. it's tricky. In a specific time frame. It gets yeah. a little tricky. Yep, it's tricky. Uh, it's tricky to rock a rhyme to rock a rhyme. Uh, chat room saying that new golf game that Netflix has out on mobile. Those, they have some good games on that Netflix mobile thing. I don't think anyone's playing it, though, which bums me I out. Because if you have a Netflix existed. subscription, you just get these games and they play. Hmm. Um, like, for example, they put out a, the, the patched up enhanced edition of... Um, oh, what's the, the turn-based mech game that everyone fell in love with by the FTL people? I can't think of the name. To the Brink or to Over the Edge or whatever it is. Oh. It's an amazing yeah, game. Um, I have it on my PC as well. But um, anyway, that's on there. Like they're just free, and they don't have any into the breach. That's into, it. There you go. And they don't have any microtransactions. It's all just play. Um, like Apple, it's like Apple TV or Apple um, Arcade, except I'm going to just go ahead and argue that some of what I've played or most of what I've played on the on the Netflix selection has been better than the Apple hmm. Arcade game. So it's pretty good. And and you are if you already have Netflix, you're in. You just have it. Um, and it doesn't run in Netflix. You have to, you know, you go you go into your Netflix thing, you click it, it goes to the App Store and downloads the game. And as long as you're a Netflix subscriber, it just works. Hmm. Um, it's great. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I knew none of that. Yeah, that's, see, how, this is the problem. that's how far up the bung hole I've been. Well, I don't think it's your fault. I think their marketing is bad. I think that they have right. been really shit poor at telling people. And they've been buying studios and buying IPs, and they've just kind of been bad at hmm. letting people know about it. So I don't think it's your fault at all. Anyway. Uh, the point is golf. Now golf. you got your Beavis and Butthead. Do you? Yes. Uh, this is also tried to be a, a returned form, and I don't think is very good. It's okay. Something about 1999, man. Something about uh, the you know no more Beavis and Butthead. We we're trying to get a fix. Maybe I don't know. I yeah, don't know. but it was another point and clicker. You know, it was all right. Yeah. Uh, I just don't think it's Beavis, as good. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead go to college. It's not nearly as much fun as the uh, virtual stupidity. It's okay. Yeah, it's uh, all right. but you're, you're trying to get some sign offs on, in college. It's a little too much intentionally adult humor. They're basically tra even though Beavis and Butthead are not going to college, they're basically feeling out college, and they're more in a college situation. Mm -hmm. It's just classic trying to take your silly characters to the next logical more adult location yeah they Not did that good, a lot though. they did that all the yeah. time i mean in the last movie there people think they're like genius um, astronauts yeah and all yeah. they care about is the machine that lets it lets them put I, a rocket inside and outside of a thing like a penis that's all they care yeah. about i i didn't care i felt like the I, I felt like it was a little too one note on that movie, by the way, I'm, I'm not a, I do the universe. Eh, it's okay. The new series. Fantastic. You can skip. I thought do the universe do the was universe. awesome. You didn't like it. I loved it. It's okay. It's kind of one note. Well, it's, it's all the things that people complain about Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it has, it's got your TP for my bunghole. It's got your, right. You know, like, like do America did like they, they're, they sing yeah. all the same songs. And so you're right, but I liked it. I also like it as a pivot yeah, point okay. to say, we need to bring these guys into the modern era and we need to address yeah. things like cell phones and YouTube and just the world that we live in now com compared to what, you know, your your average adolescent a-hole lived in in the 90s. Yes. And I think that the movie gave them that that pivot because it wouldn't have had, yeah. you know, they literally traveled through time uh, and ended up here. So and, and, I did. My favorite part, though, is smart Beavis and smart butthead. Other than that, it felt very one notish. Oh, I did like those guys. The, the, the alien yeah. looking uh, yeah. smartest of all the universes of Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Nice, even they hadn't scored yet. Wasn't that the deal? Yeah. Yeah. That was the whole deal. So, yeah. yeah. They're really, always trying to score. I enjoyed the movie a lot. It was great. Uh Anyway, those are your games. Those are all of them. That's everything. And if you're into seeing Beavis and Betta without Metallica on their shirts and uh, DCDC, then I'm telling you, this is the de this is time for you to be alive because they wear Skull and Death Rock. Skull and Death Rock, and it's stupid. 
Um, but overall, you know, I feel like they made a mark. It was good. I loved, yeah. uh, I loved, uh, in fact, I remember thinking back then when I played that first PC game that was really good, I remember going, well, it'd be cool if Mike Judge made like a full on, uh, uh, King of the Hill point and click game. Yeah. I'd play that. Yeah. I'd play the crap out of that. Yeah. Somebody stole all the propane. Hell, Hank, go find it. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I would even, I, I would, I was jonesing for a good, like the, is these kind of games, like the point and click stuff and management and all that stuff kind of evolved into like Simpsons tapped out. And I always, I was like, Oh God, I'd love to have a, like a King of the Hill tapped out. And I know they have like, you know, some Fox point and click mini game things yeah. too. But yeah, I just wanted more Beavis and Butthead really. Do you think we'll get them in that head. Viacom uh, brawler game that's got like SpongeBob and everybody in it? You think? Uh, I I think they've they've been they've been still adding some stuff. I think if it continues to do uh oh, like it's been doing, I think it will. It still got some buzz around it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it never quite yeah. reached the uh, the accolades that the Simpsons did in terms of tie-ins for games. Right. Um, but they tried, and I have some respect yeah. for that. Yeah. And I kind of want to play that Super NES game through because it's actually kind of easy. You know, oh yeah, just tear through it and say I did it. I don't know. I probably all I know is that playing the Beavis and Butthead games this past week really took me back to the 90s and allowed me to really just enjoy stupid humor, turn my brain off, and and not you know, not have to think about anything. That's what you do. You just, you just turn your brain off. You can turn it back on. I mean, Mike Judge sometimes will give you a little, you know, social satire and, uh, you kind of catches you off guard. That's what the humor is. Yeah. It's like it's mostly dumb stuff, and then occasionally something smart will get spit out, and you're like, oh, wait. Yep. You just threw me for a loop. That, that like would the happen. frog in frog baseball. Exactly. Uh, for me, it's about a simpler time. And right. as dumb as it is, juvenile as it is, it represents a, a period of my life where I was just right. chilled out, man. And when we talk about simpler time, we understand that going back in time doesn't make things simpler. Going back to a time when we didn't have any responsibilities in our memories, well, that's different. Definitely we didn't have as many simpler. responsibilities, and it was a simpler time because there wasn't as many things that were on our shoulders. Yeah, I know there's, we, there's always dark shit going on, but we right. weren't, we weren't like, fully functioning adults. Society was having a hard time. Yeah. It's got not so much. Yeah, <laughs> Brian and I. Yeah. <laughs> we were children. We didn't we, yeah, we, were children. we didn't care. We were watching Beavis and Butthead, and we were enjoying we it. We had no responsibilities. We had no money to affect change. We were nobody. Mm-hmm. Even so, when I, even yeah. when my, when I was uh, had gotten, I got married in '92, had Taylor in '94. You'd say, "Oh no, Scott, you were, you were a fully functioning adult." No, as a 25 no. year old dumbass, no, I, was like, a, I was a man child. I was a man child, <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, we uh, the infantilization of uh, the American children as it was. Yep. We eventually grew up. We did mostly. Yeah, much to, much mostly. to my chagrin. <laughs> uh, whatever. We're still doing the show. I guess that's good. All right, we're gonna play. Guess my game now. This is uh, not my game. Our game. And uh, I'm gonna start with me after I play this little intro for it right here. Destroy it. <laughs> I play an audio clip. Brian tries to guess what game it is. We give some clues. We see how we do. He does the same to me after that. Let's get this started. Brian, I'm going to play a clip yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, the same to you. Mm, yeah. the, year, the year is uh, 2001. All right. So still within our little territory of retro, you know, right, right. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two thousand one. That's still in the retro because it, it could be a Game Boy Advance game or it a Game sure Boy could. Color. I mean, it come sure on, how yeah. retro is that? That's retro as hell. So here it is. Check it out. Dreamland. Jeopardy. This Jeopardy. Is Jeopardy. This is Jeopardy. Not Jeopardy. Uh, I'll give you a hint. This is a GBA game. Sounds like a GBA game. Made just for the GBA. It's going to give it away now. It sounds like a Mario of some sort. Oh. Wow, that sounds like a Sonic game. Hmm. Well, you might be right. What do you think? What do you think this is? Sonic Advanced. (laughs) You got it. Yeah, you totally got it. It's Sonic Advance. They made three of them. It's Sonic Advance 1, 2, and 3. They were uh, Nintendo uh, Game Boy Advance uh, exclusives. I don't think they've been anywhere else, like in a compilation yeah, or anything, yeah. as far as I know. And they were good. They were good Sonic games. 
They were a good time. I liked them. Yeah, you can't, three. you can't hang. You can't hide that collection. If I, I could, I could hear ring collects and coins collects. Yeah, you could pretty much. Yeah, yeah. him spinning like you're screwed. I knew I was going to be screwed yeah. on this one. So there's an easy one for you. Let's see how. Now hard I feel yours is. bad because I picked a really hard one. At least for me, I was like, I don't remember this at all. And so yeah, this is. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> In advance. in advance. All right. Well, let's find. Oh, that's funny. In advance. Get it? Advance. Yeah. In advance. Yeah. There you go. 1993. Yeah. This was also a radical entertainment for the NES. Oh, okay. NES. We're going back. Here it is. And this is actually for the SNES version. Oh, really? Is where the I think the music is from. I think. Think. That sounds like NES to me. It might be. I think it was NES, actually. Yeah, the, the, yeah that was NES. Unless they actually. just did a straight port and didn't worry about music. No, no, no. no. Um, give me another hint. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, bu- 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 this is... Um, Platformer? It's, education. It's, an, it's an educational game. Oh. They also had a Macintosh version in 1994. Um, this isn't that Mario. Mario, oh. they did a series oh. of Mario education titles. Um, oh. Oh. What is this called? I never played this, but it sounds like you may have at least heard. Oh, it I saw it, but I never played it. Um, oh, this is gonna bug me. I'll tell you what, what? you don't play as Mario. No, that's true. Because Mario's like there to teach you and stuff. Actually, it's not Mario teaches Mario's, typing. Mario's not anywhere to be found. <laughs> oh, really? Nintendo teaches typing. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I know. I know Dude. they put out a series of educational NES games, but right. I do not remember any of it. Luigi's first starring role in a video game, although is the main character of the 1990 game watch game Luigi's Hammer Toss. Yeah. This is Mario is missing. Kind of like what we had to do in Luigi's Mansion. Where's Mario? Mario. Yeah. So what happened? Mario. So you had to, what did you do as a player? You had to learn how to do math or some shit? Like that? Yeah, I think you, uh, you got to travel the world and it returns stolen treasures. But yeah, along the way, you got to do... Uh, you got to do stuff like uh, matching and uh, you know finding things. There might be some math involved too. Okay, I'm gonna play the only clip I have with Luigi's name in it. Ready? All right, do it here. Mama, Mama <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> I I don't remember what that was about. Was that like the car? That was the cartoon, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. <laughs> but yeah, I know I didn't know anything about Mario is missing. But I, when I, as I as I dove deep into the radical entertainment, who gave us our Genesis version of yeah. of the Beavis and Butthead uh, from '94, I saw they did this, and I was like, oh, I don't remember anything about Mario is missing. And I love Luigi, so it was it was all up my hoo ha. Yeah, that is straight up your hoo ha. Uh, I wish I could. Yeah. Find, I thought I captured him going Mario, and I don't have it. Mario. Let's see. No, that's not it. Hold on. No, that's not it. Just a second. No, no, no. It's a meme. No, we know that one. Woot. No. Wooj man in the chat room guessed a couple of games, and one of them was correct. Mario is missing. Mario is Got missing. It. Okay. Well, there you go. Not available anywhere. <laughs> I don't think. You not can... available anywhere. That's not going to be on that uh, on the Switch online. No. Thing. I mean, I don't no. think it will be unless it was thought of more highly or something. I don't know. Right. Weren't there some educational games that were really big for a while there? Like, uh, well, there's yeah. the Mavis it Beacon stuff, but those aren't really games. They just tell you how to type. Oh, uh, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Those games were education titles. Oh, yeah, we've got it. We've actually got to get to that. We're going to definitely do an episode on uh, Carmen San Diego. Yeah. I, that is that is a no brainer. That was a huge even in my even in my time. Even though it was a little bit. Some of it was after my time. Yeah. I it's still big, though. It's big. a big, yeah, yeah, big hit. Yeah. People are into that stuff. There's a whole generation of kids who grew up on that shit. Anyway, yeah. we'll get to all that uh, at some other time. But for now. Welcome to the treasure room. Emails. Email. I got some emails to read. One email in particular. This came to playretroshow at gmail.com. 
This is from David who says, hello, I've been listening to the show since it started and I have been enjoying walking down memory lane with all of these retro games. I've noticed you seem to focus on console games. I'm wondering if you ever considered looking into some of the PC games. Would love to hear your thoughts on the classic Command & Conquer game, especially after listening to the Strike episode where you said they had the best FMVs of the era, to which I respectfully disagree. <laughs> Thank you for the content and what y'all make. David, um, yeah, and we should have clarified also when we were talking about those cutscenes that we we meant console cutscenes. Right. We um, meant console cutscenes. Yeah. They're still amazing on their own. They they was still they still hold up against anybody anywhere, but you're right. Yeah. Uh Command and Conquer has some of the the best. Oh, full without a doubt. Video. And Command and Conquer deserves an entire dedicated episode. Um I, yeah. I would love to get into what happened with Westwood Studios, how that all fell apart at some point, how Blizzard came in and ate their lunch with uh with Warcraft yeah. and and some of the weirdness that was going on there. This it's a very strange era for that developer and where Westwood ended up, which is obliterated. They're not really anything anymore. Um, yeah. But at the time, but, they made the greatest freaking RTS ever made. It was so good. They really did. They really did. And so there's good. so many great PC games. And don't for, don't think we've forgotten about the PC games. I've been working hard over the last couple of months trying to make some kind of environment. So that I could play at least a majority or at least a, a, a large number of PC games. And unless they're ported, you know, over to, you know, like like good old games or maybe Steam has a remaster or something, it's really hard to get PC games, especially in the ones that are like in the 95. Mm. Like when they when they go from DOS, easy to emulate. DOS box, it exists. There's other things too. Sure. But once you get to 95. 98 when you start getting those first couple of years of the direct x really going full yeah. steam yeah it really gets complicated yeah. uh yeah and it's all the way up to you get to like windows layer windows xp so there's like a and that's and that's the lion's share of where we play retro mm -hmm. in most of the time yeah. so it's complicated uh, era for sure we can still talk about them even though the stuff's harder to play today but yeah but for sure we will definitely get into it and dice tomato in the chat says the blizzard did not eat their lunch Dude, Blizzard came in with Warcraft, especially two, and overtook the RTS nom, market. Nom, 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 just nom. destroyed that market. Destroyed and, them with lasers. And those guys, you know, Westwood scrambled. They were struggling. There's a whole story behind this. And they end up selling themselves to EA to their to their detriment. Right. It's what killed them in the end. Uh, like a lot of devs that get bought by EA, got chewed up and spit out. Um, there's a whole thing with that. We'll get into all of yeah. it. I was playing those but, games right up until Tiberian Sun. But by then, yeah. Warcraft had already done it. They'd already done it. Yeah. And guess who's still Luckily, making Warcraft games? And I'm not, look, I'm not the biggest Blizzard fan these days, but one but, of those companies is still making games. <laughs> and yeah, Warcraft is that. True. So. Just saying. And, and luckily, uh, Command and Conquer uh, is a big enough franchise and has went on long enough that there's been remasters and, you know, there's there's ways to play that game. So yeah, I the definitely think that's the, definitely in our future. Remasters out now, I think, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, and they took all the old video and, like, did some, like, AI uprising and stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Because they didn't have the original uh, masters and stuff, so they had to use AI yeah. to do it. And it, looks, it looks amazing. Which, of um, course, means Brian's got to dig through the archives and find the original so I can look at it in full ass mode. Yeah, you got to see it in ass mode. You're right. Yeah, so I can compare. Remaster Collection. Is this on Steam? It is. Let me just see what this goes for these days. Uh, well, this sold pretty well. At least Steam numbers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. 19.99 is all. And, uh, oh, it looks good compared to the old ones. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just up res sprites and stuff, but... Um, what? Why isn't Mark Jamison Shepard replaced with Jordan Peterson? What does that even mean? <laughs> uh oh, Scott's getting about to head down a rabbit hole. Speaking of uh, go there. games you can't hardly find anymore, just yeah. about all those games, uh, those Beavis and Butthead games we talked about today are abandonware. So uh, you can you can find them at archive.org or myabandonware.com. Oh, yeah. I think it is something like that. So there there's a there's plenty of ways to get those ROMs because nobody's really watching them they no, just no you're absolutely <laughs> they've right been a, they've just been abandoned you're absolutely right someone in the chat says i wonder if any of these rts games work uh well on the steam deck they work they i wouldn't i don't oh. know if i'd say well because the steam gets decks got these two you know you got your two thumb pads right these two things yeah. here they yeah. act as mice basically sort of mice. an extension of what they tried to do with the steam controller years ago 
Um, and they work. They totally work. Do they work great? And would you prefer them over a mouse? No. <laughs> and you can you can plug in a keyboard and mouse. Yeah, that thing, right? mouse but that kind of takes the sure. portability out of it, right? It's it does. If you're if you're on a, a long trip though, and you got a little uh, Bluetooth keyboard and mouse or something, uh, right. totally fine. You can totally do that. That would work. Um, all right, that's it for uh, emails. Thanks for the uh, the uh, the email. And yes, we're gonna. In fact, next week we're getting all into it. Commodore sixty four top five. That's a computer. Mm. That's a PC. It. It is a PC, and we I picked it because I knew that it's kind of like, once again, it's kind of a closed system. It's yeah. like, oh, it was 64. It was around for a really long time. It was Games were being developed for this thing actively for at least 10 years. It's, there's still people making the games for it, but really, it's, it's active life. It's mm-hmm. really long. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's tons of games, 10,000 games or something like that. Yeah, so, there's a yeah, lot. We're Most only going to pick are, five. Yeah, many are bad. <laughs> many are terrible and not worth bringing up. Many are However, horrible. Uh, it's going to be But great. you may hear of a few things. I don't. We haven't definitely determined the exact uh, top five because we don't want to spoil it, but there may be a Turk and in there that people seem to love maybe some international karate <laughs> those kind of games <laughs> uh but if you have your favorite maybe you can uh you can you could talk us into to something else but we have we have a list we don't want to spoil it here but i don't uh, see hard hat mac on this list so there's going to be trouble we'll see we'll see yeah. we'll just have to <laughs> we have we'll, <laughs> we're gonna wing it we're gonna wing it for sure so that's next week commodore 64 play retro top five and that list will what I'm looking at here is probably going to get tweaked. We'll see. Yeah. We don't yeah. know. Uh, but that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be great. So come on oh, back yeah. for that. We'll do that next week. And in the meantime, I'd like everybody who can hear me, who has not yet joined our Patreon, at the very least, go look at it and decide whether it's for you. Okay? Because we got cool benefits and you get to support your favorite show. Why wouldn't you want to do that? You know? Yeah, why not? No why, commercials ever. Well, yeah, why not Why not love the one you're with yeah. or something? Uh, yeah. Why not be like uh, the following people? I swear Seb signs up for everything. Seb is the greatest. He is the greatest. Seb, uh, Seb's Seb on here. Seb is the greatest. Uh, Cologne Brothers also on here. Mm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oolong Brothers, not Cologne. Oh, oh, I like Cologne Brothers. They, they smell great. Yep. Sensei's on here. Justin McLeod. Or sorry, Justin McDonald. Why did I say McLeod? I don't know. I don't, there can only be one, though. There can only be one. Anyway, if you want to be like them, go check it out. Uh, you'll never get a commercial or an ad of any kind. You'll get pre-show content every week. you get monthly benefits. There's no reason not to join. So head on over now to patreon.com slash playretro and sign up today. Playretroshow at gmail.com is that email address once again. Playretroshow on Twitter. And everything else is at frogpants.com slash play retro brian do you have anything to add before we go today why why commodore 16 live live 16 i gotta get you a motivator unit i promise you can do look you don't want that red one uh you're gonna put them in a chemical bath and and suddenly it speaks (laughs) ten thousand languages I'm excited for you. Uh, that'll do it for us. Listen, this is what I want you to do between now and the next time we see you all. Go play something retro. And we'll see you next time. Be retro. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Jeez. <laughs> that is so...